All right. So we've got a, an area of erythema, the medical term, so redness in this, the armpit, the axilla of this poor guy. I think this is a staph infection. It looks to me like a boil or a pharyncle. It's a technical term. And I, that area is probably very hot. It's tender to touch. Um, and, and this is a very common skin infection that we'd see. And it's primarily an infection of the the hair follicle in the armpit there that's expanded out into a into a deeper boil mm -hmm. and it's where that staph that often staph oeris which is a, a bacteria that commonly lives on people's skin it's, uh it, it can get into their hair follicle and and cause deeper infection like this and uh yeah it's pretty pretty unpleasant yeah so this is a, a staph infection so this is a I, I, in my opinion, certainly in my experience, probably the one of the more common ones that you see. Um, so, so does it present in the other ways, or is it typically like this? I think we've got a couple more pictures. So yeah. I don't know if we should we scroll through those as Go well. Ahead. Yeah. Uh, so that's it. Yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> Fuck so this beauty, that one. <laughs> yeah. So this is a real up close one. So this is um, yeah. What we're we seeing here. It's a be yeah. It's a really pointing at us. That that one, isn't it? That that is another boil. Again, scat staph infection, and sometimes they can you can form pus under the skin that turns into a big abscess. And if it gets really big, sometimes that needs a what we call incision and drainage, so a bit of a bit of surgery to open it up and drain the pus out. But most of these tend to drain by themselves, so they form a head like this, and then that top will just open, uh, the roof will open, and the the pus will drain out, and that's normally where it resolves. We do sometimes give antibiotics by mouth to help with these if they get particularly infected but um yeah okay <laughs> and so does it present in the other way so you've got this is it always a singular thing or is it does it do you get multiple boils or how does it normally look yeah well if it's involving a hair follicle it can start off with something called folliculitis right. which is infection of the the follicle which is often caused by staph and that's normally little um, painful bumps on the skin uh, but there's another form of, of staph called impetigo which is probably the more contagious version that you're going to see in your average um, gym environment this this kind of infection here boils are le not so contagious that, that they're more to do with the um, some people just more prone to getting them and they form in in uh, in skin that's perhaps quite sweaty and uh, areas of the body that are naturally quite moist and uh, personal hygiene definitely comes into it. So they're not as contagious as other forms of skin staph infections. The, the big one that we, we're going to see in, in, in close contact sports where you're rolling and grappling is, is in Patigo. And that looks a little bit different than this. Okay. Um, and th this is one of those things that I've heard previously that like, once you catch it, it's like you have it in you. So in regard to avoiding this type of thing, mm. you obviously mentioned about hygiene a second ago, but is it, is it avoidable or is it just, you know, is it just one of those things that you're going to catch in those environments? With, with boils, yeah. less so, less avoidable. I think it's some people, unfortunately, just prone to, prone to getting them and in particularly in hot, sweaty environments, they, they happen. And you, you, yes, you can massively up your game with your personal hygiene, but they, they will just come and go whereas the, the impetigo side that is much more contagious between one person to another so that that's really where so you if can, someone if yeah. someone had this um say they had a spot and it looked really similar to this and then yeah. you know once it stopped hurting would they be all right to go on the mats and train again while this is still not like not yeah. quite like this but maybe once it cleared up a little bit there was still like a little bit of redness you don't think that's contagious at that point not all staph infections are the same so for me this i i i'm probably, about like if it's folliculitis if it's that sort of like you know that pore that's got infected you can kind of tell yeah like yeah you said um, i mean with I, that would they in theory yes it, you could still spread staph to your training partner I, I think with all these infections the safest option is always to refrain uh until you're on treatment i mean once you've had a couple of days of antibiotics once that pus is drained this is no longer likely to be infectious okay yeah so just yeah. waiting so there's no pus it's not minging and then you can go back yeah to yeah once it's burnt out if you like once it's it's the pain's gone the redness has settled uh, and it's not draining pus anymore and you've been on antibiotics say for maybe three or four days something like this you you the chance of that being infectious is much lower yeah okay so in, in regard to treatment you just touched on it then but antibiotics is, is that is that what you need for this not necessarily for, for small boils yeah. like this 
actually, in my experience, they do tend to resolve on the whole without any specific treatment. Um, as long as they eventually come to a head and drain, uh, job done. If they're in a more sensitive area in the groin or uh, around the buttock, uh, or they get very elbow. big, elbow maybe, <laughs> or if it develops a big abscess, yeah. you, you can feel there's some fluid under there, then they need, it might need a bit more treatment. But the smaller ones usually sort themselves out. Yeah, okay. Um, and I'm going to show you this because I can't pronounce it, but that, that particular type of staff there. Uh, yeah, well, the top one. Yeah, how do you pronounce that? Staphylococcus aureus. Very good. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'd love to see you try that. I'm not even going to do it to myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, so I think that one in particular is quite common. Yeah. And from what I understand, that's a, a type of MRSA, which we know is is quite can be quite lethal. Um, and some of the, I've not got any pictures of it on my laptop right now to show, but some of the pictures that I've seen as a result of this have been holes in people. Like, yeah. So it's, it feels like that particular type of staff is yeah. quite serious. Yeah. Is that right? Well, okay, let's talk about staph and MRSA. So staphylococcus, coccus just means it's round shaped bacteria. Bacillus is a rod shaped one. So it just describes the shape. Aureus means golden, because you sometimes get this kind of golden crust, particularly within Pitigo. Um and there is a, a, a variant of staph, which is called MRSA, and that stands for methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. And a lot of people are obviously afraid of this. You see it in the media, you get these um, cases of really nasty infections in, in particularly in hospital environments. And it's actually, MRSA is not any worse than your run of the mill staph. About one to 3% of people will have it just living in their body, in their nose, on their skin. That, that's called a, uh, uh, it, kind of a, a skin commensal or something, a bug, a bacteria that just lives on your skin normally without causing any problems. About 15% of people will have normal, just regular staph on their skin anyway, without causing problems. And the reason MRSA can be a, a difficult is it's resistant to a lot of antibiotics. So when it does go on to cause infection, it's not just sitting on your skin, it penetrates into the skin and causes infection, it's harder to treat because a lot of antibiotics that we have don't work on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So that's the issue. So the antibiotics stop working and then it's like, oh shit. Like, yeah, then you can be in a bit of a spot of trouble. Yeah. Yeah. So would that be typically where you see people with skin and lumps getting cut out of them and stuff to, to remove it or? Yeah. I, I, so if, if you send a swab of the, the skin, if you've got a boil that's not, not resolving and there's pus coming out, we can send a sample of that to the lab, look at it down the microscope, try and culture it, grow it in a Petri dish. And then you can work out what kind of organism you're dealing with. And if it's an MRSA, then you, you just know it's, it's gonna be a harder fight to, to get that sorted out. But it, it's it's much less common. We tend to see it in hospitalized patients. That's where that tends to spread. Um, but in, in, in something like this that isn't resolving, then a skin swab from your GP or your health provider is a good way to get a feel for, you know, what. What, what's going on? Could this be something like that? 